Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. I feel like I need a new intro line. No. Why would you feel like you need a new intro line? I always felt like that was really corny. What's corny about it? You rush the vibe with our tribe. It rhymes. Yeah, it's corny. Oh. You know, like, rhyming and um, alliteration are, like, two key principles in, like, marketing and recruiting and stuff. Oh, like stuff the stuff that rhymes sounds better. And if you notice things that when you use alliteration. I mean, I love alliteration, but yeah. it just feels corny coming out I of I mean, the, the intro doesn't really have alliteration, but I'm just saying. The I rhyme. think it, Okay. We'll I like it. Long. But Two. maybe we should ask, you know, how do y'all feel about it? Anyone who's been here from day one. Of course, you didn't say it. Mm-mm, I started you it. You started mid, I think like mid-season. I just kind of needed something else. And that's where we went. Because you just and you just did the hi, hello, hey. Hi, hello, hey. Okay. Which is rumored to be on a t-shirt design if we ever get one. Oh, I thought somebody was using it. And I was, no. Oh, yeah. I just got to figure yeah. out the fundamentals. Because I asked you and you said you wanted us to take orders first and then order t-shirts. I don't need you putting private Rush Matters which, business on the Which then on the would interwebs. stress on me because it's like... Now I got a pre-order and all. No, that stuff. so you can you can literally um, get a design. Yeah, you may have misunderstood me, because um, there are services you can use where you get a you get a you can send them a logo and then when an order comes in, it's basically like drop shipping. They print it and then they ship it for you. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I thought I had to like order a bunch in advance. No. See, and this is why you should handle the merch. And that's part. why I said you it was just misunderstanding. But if you had been working on it, I'm sure it would have come up in conversation I at some point. I went to websites. I was scouting somebody out. Yeah. Well, we need someone to make the to make the design the merch. But then we can just send it to somebody unless she actually does her own printing. I don't know. I don't know all uh-huh. any of this e commerce. I don't have a master's in business administration. Oh. Uh-huh. I do though. You do, which is why you should be handling this. Uh, I delegate. I'm delegating, baby. And this is who knows what they're doing. It's a stretch project. Trying to get that that growth. Maybe that's not the direction I'm trying to grow. Doesn't matter. It's out of your comfort zone, which is why you need to work on it. No, it's out of my experience. I don't know it. Well, you've taught yourself something before, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it again. Why don't you just handle it? I, because I'm the one who handles. I do the EP. Oh, this? Yes. Executive producer of yeah. Rush Rods Podcast. As am I. That is not... No. <laughs> We're not going to go through this again. You're the talent. But... Um, I'm a producer. Back back end... And you know, merch, merch is and, back end. No, I'm saying all that stuff is you. No, I'm the talent. Slash back end. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very uh, vanilla, skinny team here at Rush Vibes, so... Why it's like going to iPad it's, here. It's like going to a small church in case, you know, we wanted to look at something. It's just with the mics, it's an uncomfortable. Uncomfortable what? Like way to search. Well, no, I would pull it up and then I'd put it back. Oh, okay. We wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't try to type on it. Anyway, what's up? What's going on? What's new? Um, apparently, I owe an apology. You do? Yeah. A well, public, I owe you two. I owe you two. One a is public apology. Yeah, I apologize to you all the time. One is serious. The other one, not so much. But I'm gonna give it to you anyway. So the not so serious one is apparently a lot of people have heard the saying, <laughs> "What's good for the goose is good for the gander." So I have been proven wrong. Thank you. It's not a backwood. North Carolina. I don't know where you country, would think a city Because it's girl talking like about me. goose and ganders. I just don't know where you think a city girl like me from. He was probably in Massachusetts, from well, one, New York by way of Massachusetts. 
Because you went to high school around these parts and you went to college. I went to one year of high school. Yeah, and then you went to college Charlotte, around here. So you Charlotte. were probably you were probably in class with I some say, local. I've known that. Some that country bumpkin. That was itty bitty. That was good for the goose. was good for the gander. No, that's actually very. But apparently it's like a, it's like an old school, like people who are older than us, their mamas used to say. It's a classic statement. Yeah, it's just, I still, I still hold that the opinion that is whack, <laughs> but it's well known. So. I apologize. You were right. It's, I know. Well, and this is me apologizing to you. Okay. Because mm-hmm. people on the internet have responded to the the post, and they said yes. Although a couple of people came for it, they said you didn't really explain it very well. No, I wasn't trying to explain it well. You were supposed to know what it meant. So do you actually know what it means? Yeah, it's good for the goose. Good for the <laughs> no, you can't. You can't use the saying as a definition. Good for you is good for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what it means? Yeah, what's good? For the, no, you can't use the de- the, the was saying as the definition. We know I know what it means. I used it properly. Did you? Yeah. It's not what that's not what the uh, that's not what the internet said. The internet, internet internet's never wrong. Internet's frequently wrong. It's not true. Anyway, what's the second? So apology? the second one is actually a really legitimate and serious apology, and I have to I have to I'm check. Already not taking. I have to seriously. check carefully because. Um, the person I'm speaking of may actually watch this. So we were young and in love and married. And we had a friend who we were cool with and they would occasionally, we were married, right? I may have already said, did I say that already? We were married, we were young, loving, and married. They would ask me for money. This person was of the opposite sex. And it wasn't like in a trying to come on to me thing. At least I didn't perceive it to be that way. But you had an issue with someone who knew both of us asking me for money when they needed help with certain things instead of asking you because you're my wife. They were of the opposite sex and you felt like that would have been respectful. That would have been the respectful thing to do. Um, and I didn't see it that way. I was just like, no, it's just, it's just our friend and they need help with money. Why, why would it not be okay? So I was driving both of our kids, two of our kids to school this morning. And it just hit me that it wasn't up to me to tell you how you should feel about that interaction, like that whole situation. Like it wasn't my place to say, no, you shouldn't feel this way because it's da da da. It's no, this is my wife telling me she has an issue with something because it makes her feel uncomfortable. So therefore I should have listened and I didn't. And it went on longer than it should have. And it stopped eventually, but it it didn't stop because I put it into it. I should have said, Hey, uh, we, David and Jessica don't mind helping you out, but you know, I would prefer that you go to my wife for it. And I didn't do that. And I apologize. I was young. And I'm not as obviously not as experienced and mature as I am now. I thought you were going to say I not as in love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I am. I'm more in love with you every single day. But uh, I'm not. Um, what was I going to use? Wasn't as wise, I guess. Yes, I am now. So uh, I'm, I'm of the belief that there's no uh, statute of limitations on apologies. So if you, you know, use Wallen back in the day and. You also want an apology, you just give it to him. So I just wanted to apologize to you. And I want to put it on film, public, public on the apology. internet, so that you know it's real. It's a so. public apology. Well, vibe tribe. No, so I just want to apologize to you. Thanks. No problem. I have no idea why it popped into my head Connection. when I was driving, um, sour drive, dropping Sino- mm. <laughs> What kid was so it? Sino- Sovereign. Dropping like, Sovereign off at, uh, at, at daycare, but... It did. I was like, you know what? I didn't handle that very well. I should just listen to Jess. Listen to your spouse. I just had a superhero complex. I was trying to save everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody that I could. Um, and I wasn't considering the most important person in my life's feelings. Or I was, but I wasn't considering them first. I was considering the other person because I felt like they were in a worse, worse situation than we were so that we should be, you know, doing what we could and it's not that you didn't believe in that it's just you didn't think it was the transaction was happening the right way so 
growth. So. Any more apologies? No. That's all, that's, I got. that's all I got for right now. Okay. That's it. All right, then. Okay, Vibe Tribe. Well, apology received. Cool. So, you... um Have no apologies. No, I, I didn't expect you to. Okay. We... We were going off because Sonoma woke up last yeah. last week and you said you wanted to talk about McDonald's thing. Yes. Not in, I don't necessarily okay. want to discuss the video. Good, cause, I'm, Cause it's, it exhausts me because it's like the DL and the, and the Monique thing and the Will and the, and the Chris Rock slap is just, it was everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, it I didn't was, really see and there that. were like real big think pieces done on it on Twitter that I don't really think we're called for it. And then I saw a post. Then we don't need to talk about no, it. No, we can talk about it. Because I feel like you were going to say that there's a, it's a microcosm mm-hmm. of a bigger issue that you want to discuss, which is cool. Uh, but I think I saw a post on like Twitter that it was just like not real. It was like made up. Like they took a picture together or something. But I, I mean, I guess she's her baby daddy. So of course they're going to take pictures. It's not out of the realm of possibility mm-hmm. for them to take pictures together. But I don't know. I don't... I, Every video I come across, you have skepticism. I have a high level of skepticism just because I know it's just all about the clout these days. It's clout chasing. So, but no, please. No, I mean, I, I guess I don't know if the validity of that video, but it did make me wonder in terms of like who, you okay over there? I <laughs> should have just poured it into a, you into a cup. Yeah. I don't know where those things are. Um, if you're dating someone how well so i guess the premise of the video if i'm not mistaken she has her she has other kids Mm -hmm. and she also has a kid with him Mm -hmm. and he allegedly brings food for his child right the two of them are not together correct and she essentially berates him yes for taking care of his kid right which a lot of people berate men for not doing correct well, he's bought his kid McDonald's, so it's I mean, debatable whether he's taking care of him. But we buy our kids McDonald's too. Yeah. So. No, I don't buy the McDonald's. Our my our, my Everybody parents else. my parents buy our kids McDonald's. You buy the McDonald's on occasion too. I when don't. we're going to see my parents, because <laughs> I got to stop and get my mom a French vanilla sugar free like iced like coffee bald spot with extra trying, uh, extra I was cream. To part my hair, so I don't have a bald spot. It's not a stress, bald spot. y'all. I was trying to part it and I just got lazy. So it's, I pinned it. Well, if you just talk like this, you can't see it. If you have good, if you have good posture. I do have great posture. I have better posture than you. Well, my posture is trash. So yours could be just less trash. Yeah. Oh, before we get into it. So this weekend, Sonoma was laying on her back and, you know, she's a baby, so she can fold in any kind of way. So I realized that she was essentially folded in half because she had her feet like up. Like just she was like getting ready to chew on her toe. So I was like, Oh, that's so cool. So I asked I think I asked Sovereign if she could fold herself in half. So then Sovereign lays back and then she picks up her leg and she puts her toe in her mouth. Hey, mommy, look, I can do it too. So then Solace tries. So of course David had to try me. I had to see if I could do it. And just because I'm older does not mean I am not flexible. So yes, I was able to successfully <laughs> It sounds so, so crazy to say. Successfully put my toe in my mouth. <laughs> so then David gives it a try. And I'm sure he, he pulled something. Like, I have met some people who are stiff and not flexible. But David takes the cake when it comes to just not, just not being pliable physically. So I just need to put that out there. I forgot how I transitioned there. But I'll come back. So anyway. Are you, are you satisfied with yourself? You, you tickle yourself? You know, see, this is oh, this. We no, 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 wait, 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 wait. So this is y'all just got insight into how our relationship goes, right? I opened the show with two, two. What was this for? Two apologies for this woman. One with the utmost sincerity, and the very first comment she makes about me is about my lifelong inability. To be flexible. To stick my toe <laughs> <laughs> in my mouth. No, I'm the most unflexible dude ever. I was told in high school that I was the most unflexible, fast person someone has ever met. 
Because I used to run. Yeah, I was going to say, because... You used to run with the wind. Runners are supposed to be flexible. Yeah, not me. Which I think makes a lot of what I was able to do even more impressive. Because I was probably going against dudes who could stick their toe in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't at any point in life. Um, but I definitely... I'm definitely not able to now. There was, there was a chance back when I was younger, but now... Because I'm old. When I'll cut the grass today... Like 83 degrees It's not Not unbearable Probably as cool as it's been In mm-hmm. a while Took like six breaks mm-hmm. He was in here so much I didn't he finally, <laughs> She was probably like I thought you were cutting when the grass When he finally came in I, I didn't even know I just wasn't He was just in and out I've never yeah. seen him in and out That frequently When cutting the grass I'm washed I'm just I'm just washed That's yeah. it It's that It's that mid 30s You're there it's all downhill from me. I ain't, we ain't waiting until 40. It's, I'm, it's, it's already. Just, what'd, your, what'd your Seinfeld say? <laughs> then you go over the top and. Just coming down. Just go down. Next thing we know, hip replacement. Like. Yeah. Like the way I be feeling sometimes. Don't. But you know what I, what I realized is that. Um, now, I'm just from Twitter. Twitter's such a fascinating place. It's amazing that it's I, free. I'm just not on Twitter enough to add. I'm just not following the right people. Um, it's got other things to And do. maybe this is. Maybe this is a uh, rock common sense, but I've been sitting. I think I told you this. I've been sitting for the most part for the last two years. Mm-hmm. And apparently that is not good for your hamstrings. Like it just, it just renders them useless and it actually weakens them. So every time I would go out and play ball with Bobby, Pastor Bob, I would always tweak a hamstring. I'm like, yeah, man, what between my hamstrings? I got to stretch. I was drinking water. I thought it was a hydration thing. Just my hamstrings, just my hamstrings use, are washed because it's just hamstrings. Yeah, because I've just been sitting, so I have to reincorporate. And I have to do things like I need to bend more because my hips is just. It's. I remember being in high school and going against like playing ball, like one on one. You mess around playing against coaches, and they would like they have like a good five minutes in them before they just like fell off. And they would always say, oh, wait, you wait. I would like, yeah, whatever. You're done waiting. <laughs> oh, I'm no, I no need to wait. It's here. I, it just arrived. You know, it's funny. For Father's Day, I was going to get you a standing desk. But, like, maybe three three days before, like, my paycheck dropped, you were like, so we're not going to be spending any money. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm glad you didn't. I had, I, uh, I had like four different ones in my Amazon cart. <laughs> well, right. one you were buying them off Amazon, so that, I'm definitely glad you didn't. Why? It's Amazon. We buy everything off. We bought these chairs. We're sitting in these off chairs. Of they're, they're an exception, but uh, desks. I haven't seen. I haven't seen good enough reviews on Amazon to be comfortable with. Well, my boss has a standing desk, though. I know. He always. I was gonna get the one I had. Like I had two of them. One of them was a, like no. I had four of them. Two of them were electric. And it had like a save setting, so you could like press the button and it would rise. But then I didn't know what color to get. I was like, I don't know what theme you're going for in your yeah. office, and I didn't want to force you into a color. And then it didn't fit, but you just kept it out of sympathy or like, oh, my wife got me this gift. So then you were like, don't don't buy anything expensive. Yeah. Um, but you were talking about uh, McDonald's. I don't even know if I'm interested in talking about that anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we just went on serious <laughs> we tangent. Went so we so far removed. Yeah. Um, you said you had had some topics. For no, that. let's talk about. Let's finish it. Well, I mean, I don't. I don't have too much to say. Like, I if it's if it was real, I don't really have too much issue with it. Um, my issue, if that whole scenario played out true, truthfully, uh, which I don't believe it did, I think it says more about her than it does about him. Um, I mean, he's bringing. I, I guess. It's one thing if you're dating someone who has kids mm-hmm. and, you know, part of the, the wooing process, part of, you know, impressing them would be, you know, taking care of their children as well. Because would it? What? <laughs> have I have heard of wooing. As, well, no, I said, would it? I mean, would yeah. that be part of it? Yeah, that would be. Why? It's. You're going to date me and I have kids and you're not going to like. Why would you want to get the children attached if you don't know if I'm going to be around? How do I know you're going to be around if you're not going to get the children attached? Like, I mean, that's just part of it. I mean, I just feel like most people would. If you're at the point where you're exposing your kids to this person that you're dating, 
I mean, part of the. Well, you said that's part of wooing as if yeah, I, I, I mean, interpreted it as it would be like it would be happening relatively quickly. No, 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 no. I'm just saying part of the dating process when you get to the point where you're introducing your kids to this person that you're dating. Um, part of that process is, you know, how do they interact with your kids? What efforts are they putting into your kids? Not saying that, you know, they have to jump into the father role or mother role, but, you know, your kids are part of your life. And if they're trying to be a part of your life, that means by default, you know, the kids are part of it too. But, you know, that the scenario in the McDonald's video, you had a guy who's not with the mother of his child and she has her own children with somebody else, which, I mean, I guess it's, it's a lot of kids. It's a lot of kids in this scenario. One could argue like, this is why you just be mindful of who you have kids with. Um, because she's expecting, because you're good enough to take care of your child. She's expecting you to take care of all her kids. And I guess, right. you know, out of courtesy, maybe it would have been nice. Like, oh, I know you got brothers and sisters in them. Let me, you know, bring them a snack as well. But I don't think he's obligated and i i didn't really go into it but i know conversations went back and forth in terms of like you know it would have been a, it would have been the nice thing to do but you know again you don't know his pocket you don't know his situation um and they're not his kids but i guess i wonder if she has that same energy towards their dad dads i don't know if they all have the same dad. i don't know how many kids are in this equation but like do you give them the same energy like or is it just more so those one kids you happen to have with this gentleman, he's a decent, whatever measure of decent is, uh, enough father to, you know, bring food to his kids and your others aren't the same. Like, I don't know. I just, I was really trying to break it down. And I think a lot of people, at least from the little I absorbed on the topic, cause I was kind of like, I don't really want to get into this. Um, the little we're aligned on that. Huh? We're aligned on that. The little I absorbed, people were trying to call him like he was trash. He wasn't, you know, doing what he's supposed to do. And what kind of people? People. I don't know. I didn't look into their profiles and read what they're about. Were I they, personally, were they, were they I, male? I, I just have a question. Were they male or female? I didn't look at their. <laughs> I didn't look at. <laughs> yeah, I yes, you did. Avatars. Yes, um, you did. You look. Com- I just looked at comments. Uh, yeah, because most people only look at comments. They don't look at profile really pictures. Don't, names don't really give you distinctive like. Um, but I like I was surprised because I felt like there was a part of me that should have been like, yo, he should have gotten food for everybody. But I was kind of like, no, those aren't his kids. Those aren't his responsibility. We should probably be thankful that he's taking care of his kid because not everyone does that. So um, and you don't. I feel like the energy she came in that video if that was real life, like maybe she's not the most peaceful child's mother to have. So I don't know. It's just my thoughts, but we don't have to, we don't have to dive into it too deep. Oh, I'm actually kind of interested in it. Okay. <laughs> you being no, facetious? No, no, I, I am kind of being facetious. No, it was, uh, uh, it's, it's never, I don't know. It's, it was. It's just very peculiar. Assuming it's real, it's just peculiar. Like, why would you expect someone who you're not with mm-hmm. to take care of someone else's mm-hmm. kids? They're taking care of theirs. So why would you like? Where are the other kids, yeah, Dad? Like that, you said, what? Yeah, so, you have that same energy. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's just weird. I mean, a lot, a lot going on, mm-hmm. right? Because um, I would imagine. Uh, if he's saying, you know, he's probably stretched, not able, not able to afford, um, to buy all those kids. I say all those kids, <laughs> like there's 20 of them, uh, buy all those kids McDonald's. You know, some could say if he was buying his kids McDonald's, he might not be able to afford much, which means he mm-hmm. probably can't afford to buy four Happy Meals as opposed to just one or whatever. And inflation. And inflation. Inflation's real. I don't and think it's. I don't think it's a low bar for. I think it's a low bar for dads in general. I remember I there was one night I was up during maternity leave. I was nursing Sonoma, and there was this article about like essentially stop praising dads for doing what dads are supposed to do. And this isn't just like you know the dad who's giving McDonald's to his kid, but just dads will do 
things that are expected of parents. As a parent, you have a kid you're supposed to take care of. <clears throat> and when a dad does it, like they get so much praise for it. But when a mom does it, it's like, well, that's what you're supposed to do, your mom. So I think the bar is, is set low for men in general because, and but, I don't even know that there's a reason but why. who's setting it? I don't know. Are the same people who criticize it the ones setting it? I think so, because they're the ones who are still Who are those people? Vloggers? I women? don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I... I'm just trying to get you to blame women for something. I just want you to do I'm it. I'm not going to... I mean, I feel fellow dads do it. I mean, I just think men have been able to get away with the bare minute... with just below the bare minimum so that when you do the bare minimum it's like oh my gosh he's great like you're a great dad i'll give you credit for that but, oh, thanks appreciate it <laughs> but, <laughs> so so but it's backhanded like, of you but it's like the bar for which you're being said to be a great dad i feel like is just your responsibility as a parent like i remember i was telling someone a friend of mine i was like oh yeah um I think I had fallen back asleep with Sonoma and David had taken the girls to daycare and camp. And I, and they were like, oh, David's such a good dad. And I was like, for transporting his kids to the place they need to be? Like, not taking away from the fact that you are a good dad, but I think so many people, and maybe it's a matter of so many people are so used to whatever the definition of a not great dad is that anything that is opposite that, that a man does for his children defaults as, Oh, he's a great dad. And it's kind of frustrating as a mom because yes, I get compliments that I'm a great mom. You're a good mom and all of this, but like, I'm just doing my mom duties. Like I'm just, mm. you know, being like, I brought these people into the world. They didn't ask to be here. It is my responsibility to care for them. But it's like the burden is heavier on moms and the praise is greater on dads. Like if you are in a work meeting and you have, you know, the baby on you, oh my God, you got the baby so cute, all the accolades. And then it's like, like I'm anxious because it's like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble. Like I have the baby or I don't want the kids to be heard in the background because as a woman I have to perform. Like I don't have kids, but I have to raise kids. Like I don't have a job. And it's just like, God, I don't know. I just think society or, or culturally we've created this standard that men are, are not necessarily held to the same level of parenthood as mothers are. And I think that's why the burden of motherhood is so heavy because there's so much that's expected from us to be classified as great mothers. And there's so much, there's so little expected from you to be classified as a great dad. Because if roles were reversed like we're in a situation where you're handling the transportation for the girls but if roles were reversed and i'm handling the transportation for the girls like there's not no one's gonna be like oh my gosh jess you're a great mom because you're taking your kids like that's not how that's seen like when you take the girls to dance or soccer like you get kudos for that but that's your job because you made you went half on these people you're responsible for them and that falls under the umbrella of responsibility but it's like you get more accolades <clears throat> men get more accolades when they do their job it's it's like the you're in a group project and the person who like you know everyone did their part and the person who like put the staple and submitted it like oh yeah thanks for submitting it but it's like you just you just like finish the work so i, I reject that <laughs> that analogy no in all, in all seriousness I, I do i think that's slightly unfair i i can appreciate where you're coming from but that that's a, that's a step too far i can't go all the way there with you i just can't you know um <clears throat> question why do we praise solace when she brings home when she does her homework or when she does things that she's supposed to do because she's a developing child. We're not developing adults? Are we we are. I mean, we're forever growing up. Okay. So, again, I ask you, why do we praise our kids when they do things that they know they're supposed to do and it's not okay to praise adults? Just I'm just curious. I'm not saying it's not okay to praise. I'm saying... Clearly it's not because you seem, you seem bothered by it. No, you're not truly listening to what I'm yes, saying. I am. No, because you're not. 
because I because disagree. if you were listening to because what I disagree, if you're truly does not mean I don't. I'm saying I'm you would be able to hear or decipher where my issue, my grievance is. My grievance isn't not that you're getting accolades. I recognize that you're a good father. On a rare occasion, I compliment you and tell you you're a good father. Um, that you're doing a good job. People tell you this all the time, but. The degrees, the frequency for which you get compliments of being a good dad and I get compliments of being a good mom are further apart. And that is because it is expected me as a woman who is bore these children to be a good mom. That is that is the definition of womanhood for the most part. You have kids. You have to do everything you can to be a good mom. Those terms go in tandem with dads. It's. It doesn't take much to be a good dad. Like I could take a picture of you guys out kicking a little ball in the backyard and post that. Oh, David's such a good dad from that picture. Like obviously that picture won't capture when you, if you have a moment where you're like, kick the ball towards me or do like, if you have a frustrating, it doesn't capture all of the stuff that goes inside, how hot it is, someone complaining, whatever. But men and I don't want to single you out. I'm going to blanket this men who are the bare minimum of good fatherhood. And when I say the bare minimum, I mean, they're just doing what is required, get accolades for that requirement. Whereas women don't. So you don't get enough accolades is what I'm hearing. I'm not asking for accolades. I'm just asking for someone else not to get them. Yes, because you don't need the accolades for doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is parenthood. So again, I ask you, so why would we, why do we cheer on our kids when they do because things that the they know they're supposed to of a small child? Cause I don't think that Sal is at the maturity level to recognize that she is supposed to do her schoolwork and do it well. So her doing it and doing it well is more so, in my opinion, just her natural ability to, you know, understand how to do math, do science, do reading, whatever it is. And it's like, oh, you, you fi- you're, you're able to figure this out. That's great. Keep at it. We're proud of you. Are you proud of yourself? Hmm. Whereas you as an adult who, even though you are still growing, still gaining wisdom, by making a kid, you knew what came with that territory. What if I didn't have a father? <clears throat> Everybody has a father, but what if I didn't have a father figure in my house? What if I didn't have, I was raised by women. Um, a lot of the men in my life were in and out because they were my mom's boyfriends or, or whatever. Um, just random men who I came across. As I was growing up, obviously I had friends who had dads and I pulled some from them. What if, what if I was just doing this fatherhood thing for the first time, flying blind, trying to figure my way out? That's still learning, right? That's still growth. That's still, because me now, I can, granted they're 30 years, 20 years apart, I can find myself in situations where I realize, oh, I can pull from this because I remember when I did something similar, my dad handled it like this. Or I remember when... My mom was really frustrated. She was going through a tough time. And I remember how my dad was sure to reassure her, let her know that he was there for her and that not be overbearing, but still be present at the same time, how we found that balance. I can remember when I was a kid, how I would be at soccer practice and my dad was my coach, but, and he was, his job was to treat everybody the same, but I would see him, you know, be really proud when I would do something well. Like I can, pull from those things because I had an example. But what if I didn't? What if I didn't have an example of someone getting up every single day at 4.30, commuting an hour to work, coming home, getting me and my brothers where we needed to go, coming home, cooking dinner, 20 minutes to himself, maybe, if that, up the next morning, rinse, wash, repeat, five days a week, five days a week, every week for 15, 16 years. What if, what if I didn't have that? So I don't know that that's what a man is supposed to do because I didn't have an example of a man every single day in my life for me to get like, yes, that's what I'm supposed to do because I don't have it. So 
I get what you're saying. Though you may not think I do. I understand. Yes. Women are treated on just in general. <laughs> like let's not let's, we don't have to single out the mothers. Women in general in this in this country are treated differently than men. And in most in some cases a very a fair amount of cases it's unfair. We talk about wage gap, we talk about attire and in, in corporate settings. Like you can you can go down the line. But yes, specifically mothers. There's a lot expected of you guys. There's a lot of it that is just taken for granted by society, by spouses at times, by kids. I I understand that. But I don't think we shouldn't encourage our husbands. We shouldn't encourage our men who are doing things, sort of kind of feeling their way out or feeling their way through fatherhood, especially when they didn't have an example before them to pull from, to set that expectation. So you say, oh, that's what a man's supposed to do. Well, how do you know if you ain't had no man to to guide you? It's not as inherent as, as some people might think. For people who had who had dads who were around who had fathers, then yeah, I mean it, it might be an automatic thing. Like I said, I pull a lot of what I do, I pull from my dad because that was my example. But not everybody had it. So we shouldn't be so quick to say you don't deserve praise or you don't deserve to be told you're doing well or you're a good dad because that's what you're supposed to do because I mean I know that that's what they're supposed to do. A lot of it is a lot of it is learned, a lot of it is is falling forward, a lot of it is scraping your knees, a lot of it is figuring out even even me. Like I don't have an answer for every situation. Um I don't get every decision right. I mean, I get majority of the situation, majority decisions, right? So even I, as someone who had an example, am still learning and still trying to figure out fatherhood. Like it's probably parenthood, fatherhood, um, marriage is probably like <laughs> the biggest guessing game or the biggest like investment ever because you just don't know until you're m- much further down the road how well you did. Like my parents had no idea that they were going to raise their last born child who would become the first generation college graduate in their family and the first one to get a graduate degree in their family. They had no idea that was going to happen. They had no idea if they were going to steer me right or wrong or whatever. They'll tell you whatever they can tell you. But I bet you every night they pray to God that they were doing exactly the best, doing the best that they could and doing the right things. I don't know. I'm sure you probably don't know, but we're doing the best that we can. We're doing the best with what we have, with what we, the examples that were put before us, with what feels right, what's led by prayer. But just imagine how much harder it would be if you didn't have an example. So even your, your example is biased because you're, you're, you're saying it just from the standpoint of a man with the assumption that women have, all the examples that we no, need. I just I just but, said I just said you don't, but I'm speaking from a man because I'm a husband and I'm a father, so obviously that's the viewpoint I'm going to speak from. But I just said, like you and I, neither one of us know, and you've had you had two parents at home, and so did I. But like you, you just I I just I maybe I should have said I should have prefaced it and said in general mm-hmm. nobody knows, but I feel like I have to defend. Um men or fathers because I am a father and I, and I understand how hard it can be. And just as society is tougher on women or unfair to women in most cases, society is a lot harder on men, especially black men, um, especially ones who have kids and ones who didn't have fathers to show them how to be present and how to be active. Society's much harder on them. So, I mean, we can go down the line and say, who's more (laughs) like who's harder who, I mean, who, who has the, the, the worst rap, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's, it's tough. Like parenthood is just tough in general, mm-hmm. period. With, like I said, whether you have an example or you don't. Um, but I was just saying from the standpoint of a mother who may have had a parent or, you know, maybe both parents in the house who has a husband or a co-parent who didn't have an example. I'm just saying we shouldn't be so quick to say, oh, well, he doesn't deserve that. That's what he's supposed to do because maybe he's still finding his way and maybe he's 
doesn't know exactly what he's supposed to do because he doesn't have that example. Like Solace brings home schoolwork at the top of every, every section. What is there? There's an example problem. So it shows, it guides you. It shows you the way that example in life is your parents prayerfully good ones, but you never know. But you take that away. Like if we took the example away from Solace, like would she be able to figure it out? Like I wouldn't know how to fill out. <laughs> like there's a once in a while I got to send mail and <laughs> I forget how to write, fill it out in the envelope. I got to go to Google and get an example. It's just true. Because some things I just, it's one of those things I don't do a lot anymore, but you know, a, a father is that example. And if you don't have that to pull from, it's tough. A mother is that example. If you don't have one to pull from motherhood is tough. Like your, your situation specifically, I can't, I couldn't imagine what it was like postpartum, all three kids. Like, I just can't. But you figured it out. We figured it out. The, the, the parts where we had to, we could do it together. We did it together, but ultimately you did a lot of it yourself. You figured it out. I think you should be proud of that. Um, and there's no way I would ever let somebody say, and there's no way I, I would think, well, that's just something she's supposed to figure out. She's a mom. She's got, you know, <laughs> she should just figure it out. Like, nah, absolutely no way. Because that's, look, there are people out there who say men, there's no way men could give birth. I agree. <laughs> there's no way. And, and because with birth comes postpartum. I don't want to deal with that. Body changing, like, like, nah. So already I'm, I'm a big fan of women who have kids. Let me tell you, your number one fan, ma'am. But no, in all seriousness, I, I understand what you're saying. And I, I understand why people would say, like, well, that's what he's supposed to do. Like, well, yes. And for people who know had examples and know what they should do and just being lazy, you know, or, you know, are doing the best that they can. Then yeah, maybe they shouldn't be praised for it, but we shouldn't just assume because someone is a father or a mother that they automatically know what they're doing. We shouldn't encourage them is all I'm saying. We shouldn't just be a blanket. We should look at it case by case. I just think the encouragement should be equal. Um, yeah, sure. But again, I ask you who's doing the criticism and the encouragement. Is it, because like you said, your friend said, oh, David's a good, like such a good dad. Was it a woman? Mm-hmm. Okay. Would, it would, are, are women more critical of, like, are, are women, or like, in your opinion, would it be women or men who are putting more pressure on women um, in terms of motherhood? Like, are, in ter- th- your example, is it, is it more men or women doing it? Like, cause I, I don't know. I think it can be equal when it comes to women. I think women are more likely to praise a good father you'll get an increase um, from female, from women, um, as opposed to men encouraging, like, or praising a good father. But I also think that men and women are critical of women and their motherhood. This is just my opinionated truth. Okay. I just think that the praise needs to be... Because, like, for your your example, like, you took solace out. On a mommy daughter date, mm-hmm. no phones. Y'all was just focused on each other, mm-hmm. and then you did the same thing for Sabi. And people were like, "I saw a lot of women like, oh my god, yes, you're so amazing! Like you're such a good mom!" Like blah blah blah. Someone could say you're supposed to take your kids out. You're supposed to spend one on one. Like you are, yeah. which is why when I was when we talked about, it, I was like, I wasn't even trying to get accolades. Like, yeah, no, just, but I'm saying. I saw women who were mm-hmm. who were saying that. So, but I don't think they shouldn't say that because, like, again, it's encouraging. Because I mean, we all have those times where we're like, "Man, I really don't know." Like my brother, my middle brother Daniel. Whew. <laughs> like there are times when my mom, I imagine she was probably like, "Yo, I I literally don't know if I'm doing this one right." <laughs> well, of course, he turned out to be great, as everybody who knows my brother. Um, and you just kind of need that encouragement as parents. Like everybody needs encouragement. Like I, I just feel, especially these in the current world that we're living in, you know, COVID and inflation and 
and people losing jobs, people getting laid off. Like, encouragement is good. I, I don't think anyone could ever have too much encouragement. Um, I think what's key is, is both the person who's being encouraged and the people who are encouraging is there's also a responsibility to make sure that it doesn't like people don't get complacent. Right. Like, um, like the example of me taking the girls to school seven in the morning, which means we're getting up at like six thirty in the morning, every morning. If people were to say, Oh my gosh, David, you're, you're taking your kids to school before the sun comes up. Like you're such a great dad, such a good dad. I was like, you know what? Damn it. I am a good dad. And all I did was just take the girls to school in the morning <laughs> and I do nothing else for them the rest of the day. Like, okay. Like, like I get that, that, you know, I'm being complacent because, Oh, I'm thinking, Oh, I got to do is just take the girls to school. This is the easiest gig ever. Um, and of course I'm having, I'm being silly, but no, I think it's important not to allow that praise to become like your ceiling, mm -hmm. what you're being praised for to become your ceiling. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's good to encourage people, but yeah, I mean, it's also on the person being encouraged. Like you got to make sure that, you know, let that, you know, get, give you a big head. So I guess I, I agree. I don't know if that was a point you were making, but I think that that's important. Like we should always keep trying to improve. Like I, I, I try to find different and better ways to be a good husband and different and better ways to be a good dad. Um, so as long as that, that aspiration to be better, um, for growth is still there. I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little encouragement. So this is something I've always, I, it's not something I necessarily take objection to because like I said, I get it. Like, like why would you praise this dude for like buying his kid diapers? Like, you know, the baby need that. Like, what's the baby going to do? Like, just <laughs> like, like shit around the house. Like you, the baby needs diapers. Like, why are you, but like you just don't know what people's story is. What I am going to say, if I don't get interrupted, is yes, someone might not grow up with a father figure, might not grow up with a mother figure, but I person and granted it's hard to say it because I grew up with both. I personally don't know that I believe that that can be an excuse to not be good because I've encountered people who will frankly say I didn't have a father who was there. I didn't have, um, you know, a father who showed up. I didn't, I, you know, it was just me and my mom, but because of all the things that I didn't get from my father, I knew I learned, I found people, you know, I've heard so many people say, you know, uncle Phil was an example of a father for me. And that was a that was a man on TV. It was a, a character on a television show. So I don't know that. I think if someone truly wants to be better, wants to know how to do something, they can seek that out. If you don't have an example of a father, you didn't have a father or the father you had wasn't good and you recognize that, you can make the efforts to seek examples of good fathers, whether they're directly in your life, whether it's a coach, whether it's someone on TV, you know, you can do that, you can see and you can emulate it as best as you choose to, you know, we all have our vices. Um, and I know that, you know, there might be limitations, you know, we're all human to earth, human, all those good stuff. You've heard that before. Right. Um, but mm. <laughs> so wow. I, 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 I'm, I'm going, I'm only going to give a little bit of a leash with that because I do think that if someone, if you like you with all of the stuff that you learned with this podcast, you had no example of, cameras and that thingy and uploading to YouTube and stuff. But you found examples. You found people who have posted videos. You watched other um, podcasts to get knowledge. You know, you were big about the sound and I never saw that as a big deal. I remember when you used to breathe into the mic. Oh my God, it was driving me so crazy. So I never <laughs> we saw had, that. We were by some fight. We almost had like some sleeping on a couch nights because I would be like, Stop speaking to the mic. She'd be like, I can't help it. I have to breathe. <laughs> 
all that to say you wanted to know how to do something so you made the effort to find good examples to do it so i just want to let you know, i have i have a point to make but continue so i will only give so much grace in terms of oh this person didn't have a good father they didn't have a father figure they didn't have an example so they don't know how to do this and that's their excuse your father raised three sons you're raising three daughters the dynamics in terms of yes foundationally you're raising children but the dynamics in terms of what three daughters are going to need in comparison to what three sons needed are different you could easily argue well i didn't have an example of a father who raised girls so i don't know what i'm doing and use that as your excuse when you're not not being sensitive or not being you know listening when i feel that you should be listening and i could be like well you know my dad raised a girl so i know how you're supposed to do this whatever but you probably thought it huh? <laughs> probably thought I it i never i actually this is the first time that's uttered, come out of my mouth but um but that's not a crutch for you the end of the day is okay i'm raising children they all happen to be girls what do i need to do as a father what can I pull from my father and what can I pull from other examples as well? So that's, I think I, I don't want to go on a tangent, but that I know you had a point you wanted to toss in. Yes. Uh, so you brought up the podcast and I'm very glad that you did um, because you're right. I knew absolutely nothing about audio. I knew a very minimal amount about video. Um, and I definitely didn't know how to kind of put it all together. I just knew we were in the house. So I kind of just wanted to do something and I've always kind of wanted to, I'm into podcasts. I'm into to talking heads and, and shows and things like that. So I was like, well, why not? But um, back when we were dating, when we took the famous sweatpants photo. My dad, I don't, know, I don't know if it was while we were dating or before we were dating, when he actually built a deck by himself, taught himself, mm-hmm. said he wanted to build a deck. And he taught himself how to do it. I can think of countless other examples of him teaching himself how to do things that he didn't have the inherent knowledge of. And I remember watching him doing those things. So yes, I do have the ability and the drive to decide and commit to learning something, to doing something because I watched my father do it. And I watched my mother do it too, right? Like um, my mother is, is has a fantastic vocabulary. She has a brilliant mind, creative mind, has taught herself how to do a various number of different things when it comes to crafts, you know, wood cutting and painting and uh, sewing. Um, she can crochet. Like my mom could do anything. You might not get it for a while, but she can do anything. Or ever. Um, love you, ma. But speaking, keeping the example with fatherhood, like I saw my dad do it. So of course I might have that in me. Well, not of course, but. That's where I pulled it from. I can speak for me personally because I saw my dad do it. And so, yeah, like that was my example. And that's how I learned. Like my dad has determination, like very few people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have his determination, but I did see him be an example of how a man can teach himself how to do things, whether it's for, um, for hobby or whether it's for survivability. But that's not, and I'm not, I'm not done yet though. So to your point, yes, I agree. Someone who doesn't have those examples, it doesn't automatically count them out. Like they're not automatically disqualified from being able to be a good father, speaking strictly to men. Um, and you use the word, you said they can still learn. Well, yes, but how do you learn by failing? Nobody learns something and gets it right away or very few people do. And there are those outliers and those exceptions out there. Shout out to them. But a learning process, a pruning process, a growing process involves a lot of frustration, a lot of failure, a lot of new concepts, not necessarily grasping them right away, but eventually grasping them right away through repetition and practice. So yes, those people who didn't have the example can go around, talk to people, watch uncle Phil rest in peace, but they're still going to have those moments where they're not, it hasn't totally clicked for them. They still have those 
instances where they're they're not going to get it right and they may not know necessarily that they got it wrong until they've done it a few times right so i'm not here to say that you know we should have pity for men who didn't have fathers and that they can never figure it out fatherhood out i'm not saying that at all what i'm saying is is that there should be a little bit more patience and a little bit more grace to use your word because they're they may not have that example, so they may have to find it from from different sources. Um, but they just may be like on a different level than somebody or a different speed than somebody who did have those examples day in and day out. Now, there are some people who had parents in the home and <laughs> it's like they don't take nothing from them or their parents were in the house. But that was it. They were just in the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like they weren't they weren't around. They weren't interacting. They were just literally in the house. So, you know, I know there's a million different there's there's countless variables of uh what kind of role and presence parents can have on their kids um i'm just saying if we're to believe that a decent majority of two parent households where there are two parent households the father plays an active role and does the best that he can maybe it's a it's a fairy tale example or whatever um that it would be easier for a son to take cues and and take in the things that his father did. And it can kind of give him somewhat of a guiding light when he becomes a father himself. I can speak to that because that's what I do. Uh, and I can't imagine what it would be like if I didn't have that. Like, I don't know. And I'll never know. But uh, I know fatherhood is uh, having having a couple of friends who are fathers who didn't have fathers in the house themselves they've asked me like yo this shit, <laughs> like yo like they tell me like yo this shit is tough I'm like yeah it is it's tough for me and i had a dad around so i can't imagine what it was like not having one um so i just i don't know i just think we should encourage everybody <laughs> but let no one off the hook either is what i'm saying too so i agree with you ultimately i do i think we have um I think we kind of get to the same place. I think we take different routes to get there. Um, but I do just, I did just want to add my perspective, whether you receive it or not. I just want to add perspective that we don't know what people's story are. What people's story is, we don't know where they are in their fatherhood journey, whether they, you know, they had the example, whether they didn't, um, and, and if they're, you know, seeking it out, whether they're just trying to, they're trying to find their way through it as most dads are, but as most parents are, but if you don't have the example, it can be tougher. So, you know, we shouldn't just say, but we shouldn't give them props for that because it's what we're supposed to do because, you know, I don't know. It could be part of their learning process. Our music is really loud. Did you turn it up? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So she wouldn't hear us. Oh, that's funny. Because it's me. If she hears my voice, it's going to, she reacts to it. So I got to create a barrier. Must be nice. Because they hear my voice, they run away. (laughs) So I'll be like, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. She knows she's saying, bruh. Little hooligan. You're a hooligan. Oh. Uh, well, that was fun and unexpected. Mm-hmm. What else you got? Nothing. Good. Because we're at hour 10. So, um, shortest episode this, this season, I think. Yeah, we've, we've gone on. Yeah. I did want to ask if you saw the, <laughs> the video about the guy who killed the chicken, his neighbor's chicken. <laughs> what? Yeah, he got a felony he felony charge. For killing a chicken? Killing a chicken. <laughs> and the way the guy I'll show it to you once we quit once we start recording, but the guy is straight comedy and his description of the interaction and he was talking about like, you know, the t- the next flare up. So he said he was trying to defend himself because he didn't feel safe. So we killed he went to swat the chicken away and 
and I'm killing it. So he swatted he, the chicken with what? A fly swat? I don't know. He just said he was trying to knock it away, and I guess he hit it too hard. You know, chicken died. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just funny. Um, and then also, uh, there were a couple of funny things I wanted us to get to back when I didn't think we'd go on the, the fatherhood topic. Um, your boy Biden. <laughs> did you see when he was reading? He did no, the repeat. <laughs> repeat the line. <gasps> Poor Biden. Oh, uh, what is the eighty going on? Going on eighty, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to get a discussion about Biden and his and his presidency and and should he um, pursue a second term. Treating the incident solely as an isolated thing, that was hilarious. Because he already, like, apparently he has a stutter, which I think he developed later in life because, like, you can look at videos of him as recently as, like, Obama's presidency, and he was he didn't stutter at all. So I don't know if that's, like, a cover or if that's no, legit. No, I think he's had it. <laughs> Or maybe it's I more. Think he's had, I think maybe it's worse because he's yeah skill. because he's older. That's fair. Um, but he, uh, I guess, when uh, <laughs> Justice Brown got sworn in, he said something like he said something is a word, and then he just <laughs> he just mumbled like it's it's bad out here. It's bad out here for for Biden. It's rough. He's almost 80 he is and look and he is bearing literally the world on his shoulders look i you've seen how the presidency there's ages young men there's a lot Obama i'm getting ready before i'm after? getting ready to say look there's a lot to being to running this household there are times where i just feel like i just want to just tap out mm-hmm. i gotta imagine running the country and then like just being being one of the most powerful positions like in the free world it's got to be that like times one million. So I, I'm not even. It's stressful. I get it. You probably don't sleep. You got to get your sleep at 79. Like you, you cannot be. You cannot sleep at 79. So. I don't know. It's tough. I, I, I don't want to. I would hate for him to feel forced out. But. You know. Liberals might want to be careful because. You know. Ruth Bader Ginsburg didn't want to go. She didn't have a, a VP. I'm just saying she didn't want to go. She didn't want to step down. Obama was like, yo, you might want to step down. She was like, no, I'm good. Did Obama ask her to step down? I believe so. I think he had a conversation with her. I was like, yo, you might want to. <laughs> you might want to take a pickleball. And then um, he didn't actually say that, by the way. Uh, so maybe maybe he'd learn. If he tries to push through, it might not might not end well. And I think he's polling like thirty um, percent approval rate. Anyway. I've given up on politics. But I was I was in a, I was I was working today, so I was working at somebody else's house, and I'll say this, and then we'll leave. And there was um, they're watching Fox News, and uh, they had, they had said there was a New York Times poll that said Biden's approval rating is like thirty percent, but compared to Trump, he's still beating Trump. <laughs> and, and of course, it's, it's a New York Times. <coughs> It's a New York Times poll, so you know, say what you want. It could be biased or whatever. But you poll you polling at thirty percent like approval rating, and you still beating somebody else in a head to head. Yo, it's bad out here. As in Trump right now, or like when Trump was at this point in his. No, presence? I'm saying like people. If the, I guess the poll is like, who would you rather vote for? Like if Trump, because it's rumored that he'll run again, Trump versus Biden. Like Biden on his own, his approval rating is thirty percent. But when you head to head, who people would prefer? They still prefer Biden. Biden still beats Trump. <laughs> it's like, bro, one, how you get waxed by somebody with a thirty percent approval rating? Like that's just you just trash as a candidate. I'm just saying, no disrespect, because I love Trump's memes and gifts and all that. Like he's great for material. Like, how does that not make you sit and think? Like, maybe I shouldn't be. <laughs> I should just stay a private citizen. <laughs> But um, it's hard out here. Dark days ahead for this country because ahead I, we're not already in the dark days. I'm just well, just, just a little darker, darker days. Um, because our options are 
And they call Slim Pickens. So, episode 59? This might be 60. I stopped counting. I think it's 60. So, 59 or 60 of Rush Vibes. Yo, if anybody's here from Facebook, because we, we did boost the post, um, we were talking about um, To the Goose Goes the Gant. No. <laughs> what is it? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Um, and I had never heard it before. And Jessica was just, just so blown away that I'd never heard the phrase before. And apparently, and I boosted the post because it was, it was a pretty funny post, I guess, uh, with some of the editing and whatnot. Um, and people seemed to respond to it. So I was like, why not boost it? We haven't boosted a post yet. Season two, first time boosting a post. I said, why not? So it's, it's doing some numbers, getting some hits. Um, so if anyone who found us through there is watching this, we appreciate you. DJ Khaled voice. And uh, we want you to continue this ride with us. So make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube and you hit the like button on Facebook where you found us and you go to Instagram and you follow us. And if you happen to have someone maybe in their family, maybe they're blind um, or maybe they just don't like watching videos, send them to Apple. Well, if they're blind, go to Apple, for, <laughs> go, go to Apple for them and, and like, uh, and subscribe to Rush Vibes on Apple Podcasts and do the same for Spotify and Google and tune in. So that's my plea. That was so painful. <laughs> what? what? Was, if they're blind. I just, mean, if they are, if they're blind, then they can listen to us, but you have to get them. You have to download Siri it for them. Capabilities oh, of yeah. supporting people oh, yeah. who are uh, visually Siri. impaired. Siri or uh, Google Assistant, Bixby, if you got a Samsung and you don't. Visually impaired. Yeah, I'm saying Samsung has no, Bixby. You said blind. I'm blind, you. visually impaired. Okay. There are degrees of blindness. Right? Like one's less bad and then one is just you like say visually blind. impaired. Why? Because that's the proper statement. Oh, please. Okay. When they come for you. They come, come on. If you're blind, you're blind. There's nothing wrong with that. Visually impaired. I got... I hear you. I'm short. I <laughs> like you. I don't say I'm, 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 vertically ver I'm vertically challenged. impaired. I'm just short. It's okay. Okay. I tried. I tried to be an example, but sometimes yeah, people get examples and they don't <laughs> use them. <laughs> whatever. Um, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Um, maybe we can get a guest in here soon. If Jessica start using her contacts. She'd be tripping. I have the contacts. I just, you need to start. I need, I need dates. People's availability. You let me know and then I can get this spot situated so we can bring them in. You, with the same person who said you don't want to oh, figure yeah. in here. Oh, it's going to be, is how long it took me to get it like this? Anytime I got to rearrange it. And then rearrange it in such a way that it's easier to put it back. Because it's be, it's taxing. Um, Yes. So we appreciate y'all for the third time, which means I really mean it. And uh, we'll see you next week. I'm hopeful that this will be a Wednesday drop, which means I would have to edit it tonight and get it uploaded. It's 50-50. Y'all see this Friday it's morning. It's 50-50. I don't mind Fridays. Fridays are nice, but I don't know. I just feel like most people are used to seeing us on Wednesdays. So like our last two episodes haven't really done that well view-wise, but... Mm -hmm. Maybe people are just busy. They were over holiday weekends. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something to do with it. Any event, we out of here. Y'all be good. Be safe. And uh some we'll vibe with y'all yeah. next week. Peace. Nothing but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. can stop me now. I done came way too far. can stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now Can't stop me now Yeah, I done came way too far, can't stop me now